Every household is filled with chairs. No, no telling how many, depending on how big a family is, there's usually many chairs in every household. And generally over time, they get used to get loose at various degrees. Um, what can happen when a chair gets loose is it can structurally begin to simply sway a bit, get looser and looser over time, and eventually break, um, causing possible injury or anything else like that that could happen. Complete collapse of the chair. Um, to determine if a chair is loose, one of the easiest methods is just simply moving it and seeing, leaning on it, going back and forth, feeling the sway in the chair. Okay. Let's see. This joint, these joints here, you can basically see that this chair is loose in different ways and really is a candidate oh, you know, for, for complete tightening. In order to truly repair a chair correctly, it must really be completely disassembled and completely re-glued. Sections of chairs can be done, but it's really advisable to do entire chairs so there's not areas that will come loose later on, long after you've already repaired part of the chair. So the chair does need to come completely apart. In order to do that successfully, we like to label the chair according to left, right, front and back so we don't get any sort of a confusion in the parts. Believe me, the chair looks great now, but as you'll see in a little while, when it's sitting on the bench in a pile of spindles, stretchers, and legs, it's very difficult to distinguish one part from the other unless you have labeled it. And we've been doing this for 30 some odd years, so it, and it still is very confusing to anybody who tempts it. The process of, of, of Tightening a chair involves, like I said, the labeling, the disassembly, the cleaning of the old glue, re-gluing and reassembly of the chair, basically. A lot of things are determined. Good glue should be used. We'll discuss that shortly. Good cleaning is vital. If the old glue is not cleaned out of a joint, which we will describe shortly also, um, the chair will come loose again. It's like painting wallpaper. Glue will only stick to as good as a surface that that's being applied to. Not many tools are needed. We use basically, in order of use, masking tape, a marker to label, a mallet, preferably a dead blow mallet that's not going to do a lot of damage to a chair, to the wood, to disassemble. Pliers in the event that there's any sort of uh, nails or anything that someone has attempted to do repairs in the past and caused that sort of problem. A file or a rasp to clean off old glue on the dowel ends. We like to use a bit to get into some of the sockets and clean it out, and we'll explain that a little bit later on too. So that's basically, not a lot of tools are involved. We have wax here, which we do apply around the joints after we've cleaned the chair, around the joints, so when we do re-glue, the, the glues that we use don't stick to the finished areas of wood and they're easily cleaned off. Okay, looking at any chair, any given chair has a right and a left, a front and a back. We don't say rear because we abbreviate, because that becomes the R of a rear becomes a right and can get confusing. So we do say the back of the chair. We try to label everything in the same exact way. So there's never confusion when someone picks a part off, a pick, a picks a part out of a box, they can see exactly where it goes. But generally the front, the front stretchers, the spindles are labeled in the center. The side ones are labeled towards the front. So when, it, when, a, when a random piece is picked up out of a pile or out of a box, you know that that goes to the front if it says, if it's marked for a side. We prefer to also, I like to see chairs over-labeled, meaning that obviously one part may obviously be the top back of a chair, but we still in any case put that on the chair so there is no confusion ever. One person might find something easy to remember and the next person might pick up at that point to tighten something in our shop or assist in a repair might, may find that confusing, being as they weren't the one to label the chair or take it apart. They're simply assisting in, say, for example, a cleaning process.
permanent marker is always a good choice. Now again, we have the left side of a chair and the right side of a chair. The leg is the left front, LF, for left front. This is the front, FNT, we like to abbreviate, top. You could abbreviate to FT. But like I said, the person just that takes a chair apart in a shop might not be the one gluing it. Front top, front bottom. Right front. Now this is obviously a different looking leg than the back leg. May not need to have front on it. The assumption we made that it's the front leg of the chair. But in many times, in many cases, the chairs, the legs and all, look the same. So we tend to over label. This is a right, right side. Top T. Right side. B. Bottom. Okay. R. B. Right back. Not right rear. That can get confusing in labeling also. Left back. Left side. Top. Left side. Bottom. Obviously, this is the back of the chair, so we put bottom and top. One, two, and three, four, always starting from the left. And this last stretcher in the chair, oops, sorry, there's two here, would be labeled back. Top, back, bottom. Okay. Okay, so we're done with the tape and we're done with the marker. We don't really like to keep the bench cluttered so that kind of goes away. Now we're going to use the mallet to take the chair apart. Hopefully it's loose enough that we don't really have to be hitting it very hard. But that is, that is why we use a dead blow mallet. There's oil and, if you can hear possibly, shot, lead shot in the mallet, so when it hits it doesn't bounce, stays down. You don't use a metal hammer, you don't use a hard wood mallet because you will damage the furniture and if you're not refinishing the piece you do want to be careful. This is, in our case, other people's property. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well we have to start, first we remove the seat. Let's see where we're going to go and it's fairly loose now so Excuse we can... Excuse me Pete. What? Sorry to interrupt, but the governor's on the phone. Who? The governor. Tell him to wait. I'm doing something. I'm busy. Please. Hello, governor. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had to get the phone. Okay, like I was saying, the seat needs to come off first. And luckily, this is fairly loose. You don't really want to brutalize these. You don't really want to brutalize these things by taking them apart. You know, you really want to take them apart as, as carefully as you can. But, but sometimes you do need to use a lot of force. So we try to separate the front from the back. And just gently separating the pieces as, as you can. If, if gentle works. If gentle doesn't work and you have to really, you know, use a little bit of force, try to use as much as you have to. But again, you don't really want to brutalize the chairs. So a lot of times when you're trying to get them apart, you, know, you might have a stubborn joint. And it does help to sometimes give them a little bit of wiggle to loosen them up. Now, <clears throat> another thing too, sometimes... These uh, chairs have been repaired in the past, and some joints may not need any sort of, 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 of persuasion. I mean, may, may not need any sort of glue. They can just be left as is. But most of the time, they come apart. Excuse me. All right, I'm so, back on. Okay. You know, at times also, it's decent to have, it's, had, it's good to have a, a, a decent vice there that you can if you have to possibly tighten the piece into the vise and just give it a little bit of, a, of, a, of a, a movement here to see if you can get it get it going a little bit. Also the vise can also be used to hold the piece while you're disassembling it a bit. Now be careful too, not too much pressure on the vise because you don't want that snippet. 
let's skip that part. Let's skip the vice part. Okay. Yeah. Let's just at this point have it pretty much apart, okay? Yeah. Okay. Now that we've taken the chair apart, we have here what was formerly a chair, now it's simply a pile of pieces. So when does a pile of pieces become a chair? Because when it's all put back together again. But you see, to distinguish this piece from this piece, when you're putting a chair back together without labeling, would become virtually impossible. Unless you want to spend all day, and time is money. That'd be a poor idea. These four, six, five or six pieces here all look alike. But we know, simply by labeling, left side bottom, and appropriately, left side top is in here somewhere. Um, we put these pieces together. Again, as I said, labeling to the front. This is the top, this is the bottom. I know that these go on this side of the chair. So when I'm ready to go, they're ready to go. Okay, most important part of all is proper cleaning. You must remove the old glue. The old glue failed in the first place, so you must remove it in order to, to get a good glue bond. What we like to do on the flat surfaces is give them a little, a little rub with the file, break the glue line, get down the raw wood. Don't remove any raw wood if you can avoid it. Just try to remove the glue and get to the raw wood. You don't want to take too much wood off because that can affect the joint. We use a gap filling glue which works very well for this sort of an application. But if you do remove too much wood, it does tend to, to have an effect on how, how well the chair will go back together. Okay, so we do, we clean off the dowels. Not much concern about the ends, only that there's not a lot of glue on the end that will stop the piece from going in the hole. But we clean these off, correctly called stretches. Clean off as much of the old glue as we can to get down to the raw wood. And again, you can certainly overdo it, so try to avoid that. Also, try to keep clear of removing any finish along the edge because you don't want to have additional touch-up work for you after the chair is done. So we clean off flat surfaces with a file, which is the easiest. You can use other tools. You can use a Dremel tool. You can even possibly use it, do them on a sander, but I, I kind of discourage people from doing that because you will take off too much wood again. The holes are cleaned out with the drill bit. We try to locate a bit that's slightly, slightly the same size as the hole. Slightly, slightly, if, if anything, just a tight fit. Slightly smaller is good. Larger is not good. You don't want to make the holes too large. Again, you have glue problems. Okay, located a bit that's slightly, slightly smaller than the hole but not, not, not too small that you're not going to get the glue out, and certainly not too large because too large of a bit will take out wood, and that's not a good thing. For safety's sake, you might want to lock a lot of these pieces in the vise. Experience down the road will tell you what to, when to do that. Okay, so in the hole, a little wiggle. You can see the glue coming out. glue is cleaned out. The hole is, you've broken the glue line in the hole and you've exposed raw wood, exactly what you need to do in order to have a good, a good glue bond. Okay, parts are all clean. We used a larger bit on the larger dowel holes. Everything is okay. All surfaces are clean. Um, in preparation for glue, an important thing to use is wax on the areas you don't want the glue to stick to. Now we use an epoxy glue, which is a two-part glue with a thickener that, um, I mean, we don't even know how long to say it stays tight. It stays tight forever. My sample chair, I sit in every day in my house. I did in 1986, and it's still as solid as a rock. So the meter's still running. Um, this is a glue we've chosen years ago, and it really does hold up extremely well. However, like I said, it will stick to finished areas if you're not careful. So we do waxing. We take a little bit of paste wax. We, we prefer dark wax because it doesn't leave a white film. And we simply, around the areas where the glue is not to stick, long finished areas, we just run a, a line of wax around that. Very easy, very quick. All those little areas around anywhere where glue is going to be applied, there's a chance that glue will squirt out of the joint, will ooze out or squirt out onto, onto finished areas, which is very careful.
Anival! Whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay. Chair's all clean, joints are all waxed. Now we gotta find the pieces. Obviously this is the seat, and obviously these are the back legs. Easy enough to identify. We have the left LB, RB, right back, and left back. Okay? These are obviously back pieces here. Top and bottom. And we have the four turned pieces that go across the back. So a dry fit is something that you'd like to do next. Sorry, we also have the lower back stretchers or dowels. Um, we have bottom back here, which we've labeled correctly, and we have looking top back. So we'll dry fit. Top back goes where it says top back, but let's remember we labeled it looking towards the back. So it would go this way. The middle piece across the back that holds the turn pieces. And of course the turn pieces, one, two, three, and four. This one snapped, we're going to piece it back together like that. And of course the top back piece, everything seems to be in order here. When you're doing this, you must remember always to have your tongue in the right position. When you're trying to line holes up, you really have to go like this, or even like this, you see, or like this. But your tongue has to be in the right position in order for this to successfully work out. Okay, so all pieces are correctly going to go together. Dry fit is successful. We don't want to push them too far together because then we're going to knock them apart a little bit again. So there we have it. And we would do the same with the legs in the front section and the side sections of the chair when the time comes. Normally when we're gluing these chairs, I like to do the back first and sit it aside, glue everything else and get it together. That's usually the more difficult piece to get together, especially when there's spindles and things like that that run up along the back. So. Our back section is disassembled, laid open accordingly. Pass it. Just wait. Pass it. No, 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 sorry. Pass it. <laughs> Omar, that's Omar. <laughs> now, if you want to come over here. We use a two-part epoxy system. As I said before, over the years, found this just to be the ultimate thing to use. It's sold by the Goujon company. It's called the West System, and it's really what we really like to do. Refer disposable cups. These are set up in metered pumps. So in this particular chair, we're gonna do one, one uh, pump of each at a time. Sometimes you can do double. You just always have to make sure it's one of the epoxy and one, one of the epoxy and one of the hardener. Okay, so one pump of hardener, one pump of epoxy. That's cotton-based fiber to the two pumps of epoxy to make it a little bit thicker so it so it will stay in the joint and not run out. If the epoxy is too thin, you're not going to get a good coating on all surfaces. It's going to kind of run out of the joint. There's a thing called glue starvation, where basically there's not enough glue in the joint. So we added that to it and we stirred it up to it's about the consistency of peanut butter or, if you wish, fluffernutter. I loved fluffernutter as a kid. And my mom would never let us get it because it was like junk food. So the first thing I did the first thing I did when I moved to the house, I bought a jar of fluff. Pete, your mom's on the phone. Okay, so I'm going to put this little part, that back part here, together first. Get epoxy in the joints. You can use a better, a better implement than this, but old habits die hard. So you get epoxy into the joint, and at the same time, you may want to make sure that all surfaces are covered. Also, keeping in mind your numbers, number three.
And the excess that's coming out now is why we put wax on. So when the epoxy gets to just the right stage, before it's too hard, before it gets to be solid like a rock, we are able to peel the semi-hard epoxy off the joint, exterior of the joint. And that works well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the question, Martha? What's the question? Uh, he's coming from south on 287. He's, okay, so he's going to exit Lafayette he's, Avenue. The Lafayette not reached yet. Okay. No, he's going to exit Lafayette Avenue. He's going to loop around back over 287. Um, hello? Okay, you're going to take the Lafayette Avenue exit from 287. That's the last one. That's the best way for you from your direction. Okay. And then you're going to loop around. Back over 287. Back over 287. And he's going to come to the Ridgedale Avenue line. Okay, the back of the chair is glued up. We've clamped it up across the faces, pulling all the joints together. At this point, we generally like to do a little bit of a cleaning with alcohol, which will take the, the un, un, unhardened glue off the joints. You have to be a bit cautious with the alcohol, though, because if you're not going to refinish a chair and you use alcohol on it, it can damage the existing finish, because often we do need to tighten new chairs, which are chairs that just... The glue had failed, for example, a chair from Ikea or something like that. That just is a newer chair, but if it had glue issues. So we clean off all the glue that we can, save us work later on. Um, if the chair is being refinished, or, or it's an older chair and you're not really concerned about too much of the smearing that the alcohol might cause, then you could use the alcohol and we do touch up later on. So... It's just a, it depends on the chair. The choice has to be made at that time. Point we're, we're clamping the chair together. Um, it's a good idea to have a good variety of good clamps that you can use. Not everybody has access to a lot of clamps. So there's other ways to go. In our shop, of course, we have uh, all kinds of clamps, as you can see right over here. We use an abundance of different clamps for different operations. In the home, in the home setting, you could possibly even use what's called a tourniquet clamp, where a piece of rope is wrapped around, a piece of wood is inserted, and it's twisted tight and pulls the chair together. That's something we could possibly look at at another time. But in this operation right now, we're going to use the clamps that we have on hand. The chair is just about together. Okay, that's enough. Seat goes into place.
been cut off. Sorry. Yeah, so just do a little. Okay, so clamps the champ. The clam is champed up. <laughs> the chair is clamped up, and ready to just set. This epoxy is an overnight dry. It cures. It doesn't dry because it chemically cures as, as it's a chemical based glue, not a water-based glue. Um, 